I say 100 students, you just caught me and Wenli in the middle of an argument. I want to go to Chipotle, and she wants to go to... Noodles. Oh my gosh, I have to have noodles. So, we decided let's just be fair, solve this like civilized women, and flip a coin. Just a way so that when Lee and I both have an equal shot of getting to what we want, basically. Yeah. So, do you have a coin on you? Um, I, don't, I'm, I, I don't think I have a I'm coin. I'm electric. On me. Yeah. I'm all electronic. Yeah, I got so, a card. Is there a way that we could simulate these same probabilities? Another way that you could have that 50% chance that you're looking for, and I can have that 50% chance that I'm looking for. Some kind of a chance process, other than flipping a coin, that would be able to simulate these same odds. What do you think? Yeah, actually, Jackie, I made up a box and, you know, I got these two pieces of paper. And then this one's for you. And Perfect. Yeah. So I could either write, you know, I could write Chipotle on it. Yeah. And I got this one and I can write noodles. And because we have, I have one, you have one, making up two tickets that we're going to throw into our box together, what we've basically done, when you give it a good shake and pull one ticket out, it's basically the same thing as, oh, I had a coin the whole time, as this coin right here, right? Uh, when we flip a coin, I take heads. That is, you know, I have I have the head side. I have one half of the coin. That is my, my wanting to go to Chipotle. Twin Lee has the tail side, so she has one half of the coin for wanting to go to noodles. So, we basically simulated, without using a coin, the same probability of, of, of flipping a coin by using these tickets. So what would you call this little mechanism you just put together, Wenli? It's a box model. So what we've basically done is we've taken a box and we've filled it with two tickets to symbolize the two sides of a coin. So this one would really be like heads and this one would be tails, right? And there's one of each, just one of each ticket in the box. Now, let's jump into some examples on what we can do further with, the, with these uh, basically simulators of probabilities. Because don't you think we can expand this beyond coins? I mean, we could make box models of dice. Roulette. Or roulette. Yeah, that's right. Or um, what else could we make it of? I mean, basically... Anything we wanted to, a yeah. big bag of candy if we wanted to. So let's let's take let's take some time to look go in deeper on these box models and jump in and see what we can do and what we can uh, basically expect from these probabilities. Wenli and I have decided to go on vacation. Wenli, where do you want to go? Vegas. I gotta go to Vegas. So we're going to Vegas, baby. So we're going to Vegas, and while we're in Vegas, we're on the street and we're stopped by a shady character who wants to get into a dice match with Wenli. He makes her a pretty good offer. What did he tell you, Wenli? He said that I can pick whatever side I want on the die, and I would have to bet um, five dollars to play. So I, my lucky number is four. So okay. if the die lands on a four, I win ten dollars. But if it lands on any other side, like a one or a six, I'm going to lose. Six dollars. Sounds good. So, just to clarify, so when the die, if a die, which is the singular form of dice, right? If a die lands on Wenli's lucky number of four, how much do you win? Wenli wins ten dollars. She wins ten dollars, and then we're going to Chipotle. So, <laughs> if the, the, but the downside of that is if the die lands anywhere else, right? Anywhere else. Now what happens? I owe the guy six bucks. Oh no, so Wenli actually pays six dollars. So, while well, Wenli is staring at the dice, trying to figure out with her statistician's mind the probabilities, I'm also hard at work. I'm thinking, well, she's looking at that die, I can make a box model of that die to simulate what are Wenli's odds of that die rolling around and landing where we want it to on that four. So, I'm hard at work. I know that that die has six sides, right? So the six sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Okay, and so now I need to uh, divide these into basically the winning sides and the losing sides, right, Wendy? Yep. Okay, so which one's the winner here? Oh, lucky number four. So lucky number four is the winner, and the rest of these are all losers, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make my tickets, and instead of writing win or lose on them, or, or putting, you know, little dots on them like the die, I'm actually going to make a box model where you put the actual value, the worth of that ticket, on the worth of that side of the die on that ticket. So, Wen Lee, if it were to if we were to roll the die and you saw it land on number one, on side number one, what does that mean? It means I'm losing six dollars, so I should put down a negative six. That's right. So she's so when it rolls on negative one on, on one, it basically means she loses six bucks. Okay, how about here? Negative six again. Another losing ticket. So another another way for her to lose six dollars. And here? Negative six again. Another losing ticket. We're getting killed, one Lee. Oh yeah. Number four. Number yes. four. There it is. <laughs> ten dollars. The ten dollar side of the die. There it is. So I want to make that ticket say ten dollars so that when I pull that from my box, I know that Wen Lee gets paid ten dollars. How about here? A negative six again. And another one. Oh okay. negative six. So there is my box, essentially, my box with these six tickets. Now that's kind of, you know, cluttered yeah, for my a board. Yeah, huge list, right? Is there a way to condense this? Yeah, we only got like two types of tickets here. We have a negative six and a ten. That's so let's right. condense those together. Yes, let's condense them into the two types of tickets that we have. We have two types of tickets. We've got our tickets that say negative six, and we have our tickets that say 10. Now I need to make sure that I remember to put the, you know, that there wasn't just one negative six ticket. I need to represent it fairly. There were lots of them, right? Yeah. So there were five ways that Wenli could lose six dollars because there were five losing sides to the die. And how about this one? I think there's only one way I can get that ten dollars. Only one way. Perfect. So we have basically simulated, and Wendley is now ready to roll. I've simulated, here is the probability, here's the box model representing the likelihood of rolling that die and having it land on four, given these stakes by that shady Vegas man. So let's enter into some problems and try and calculate how much money can we expect to walk away with. So here we are on the shady streets of Las Vegas. I've created this box model, and Wen Lee has agreed to play this dice game a hundred times. I got a gambling addiction. I just got to play a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> she's on her roll. So she's playing a hundred times, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. How much money can we expect to walk away with? Are we going to really hit it big? And can, Is Wen Lee about to take Vegas? Or are we about to get killed out there? So. We, I'm basically wanting to calculate the expected value of the sum. The expected value of the sum of these tickets. So each ticket I'm pulling out of my box, I'm adding up what that ticket says and representing basically one roll, of, one roll at a time, one roll of die at a time. So Wen Lee, what is the expected value of the sum? Well, Jackie, the expected value of the sum we can abbreviate as EV sum, it's actually equal to n, which is our number of rolls or draws or however many times I'm playing this game, times the average of the box. I see. So n is that number of times we're pulling tickets from the box, representing a roll of the die. Exactly. So here I'm playing 100 times, so that means I'm going to be pulling tickets out a hundred times, and that's going to correspond n as 100 here. Yes. How can, how can you pull a hundred tickets? Don't you, do, don't you only have six tickets in the box? Yeah. That's a great question. Well, to simulate a real die, after I pull out a ticket, say I got that 10, I'm going to put it back into the box. It's like with replacement. You know, when you roll a die, let's see. I got a four here, right? So I actually got the ten dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah. So after I got that ten dollars, after I picked out that ten dollar, uh, that ticket with that ten written on it, I'm gonna have to put it back. You know, when I roll a four, you know that four isn't gonna disappear off the die, right? Right. It's always gonna stay with a six-sided, um, 
number of dots, I guess. Yes. So you're saying the die always has six sides, always the same probability, no matter how many times I roll it. So we want to maintain our box being the same. Exactly. So we got to keep replacing those tickets. Remember when we were doing with replacement when yeah. those old probabilities? So you're right, though. So every time we pull a ticket, we put it back in to simulate those same odds. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we played 100 times. That's our end. Where do we go now, Wendley? We want to figure out the average of the box. Mm. So a lot of mistakes I've been seeing lately is that people just see, well, I see negative 6 and a 10. I'm going to add them together and divide by 2 because that's the number of tickets, right? 2. But that's not right at all. We have to account for every single ticket in the box. Ah, yes, because there's two types of tickets, but there's actually six total tickets. Right. You need to divide by six. So let's write it out. So the average here, let's calculate this. So I have one ten, so I have one ten, so I have a ten here. And if I'm taking the average, I want to add up all the values written on these tickets, right? Mm -hmm. So I have ten plus negative six. Good. Plus negative six. Plus negative six. Plus negative six. Wow, geez, this is getting really long. Plus negative six. How many negative sixes do I need, Jackie? Wow, you're going to need five negative sixes, okay. right? So let's see. I have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Great. So I have the top numerator part. Now I want the denominator. There's a, the denominator has a total number of tickets in that box. Mm -hmm. So it's not two. No, it's the six. Right. There are six sides to the die. Six total tickets. Right, so a big fat six goes on the bottom here. Good. So, this is still a really long list, right? Yeah, you're, that's going to kill your hand on the exam. It is, it is. My hand's going to be tired. Yeah, so instead, we can simplify this down into um, this expression here. So I have 110, right? So I have this 110, that represents that one ticket right up uh, here. Yes. So I have 1 times 10. Plus, I can combine all these sixes, right? Since there are, let's see, five negative sixes here, I can just do five times negative six. I see. So just like we kind of condensed our long box into, you know, a shorter box, we can kind of condense this long average formula into a shorter average formula by combining these like tickets. Exactly. So you're saying that this one means that there was one ticket that said 10 on it, worth yeah, a value of 10? Yeah. Okay. And then over here, five tickets that were worth negative 6. Now I'm with you. Okay. So these are the same thing. Right, exactly. So here I'm just multiplying 1 times 10 plus 5 times negative 6. So actually, I should fix these parentheses here. Excellent. Okay. So this represents the number of tickets that you have. And this is the actual value. So this is the number of tickets and this is a value written on those tickets. Okay. So now I want to carry over that six and right. transfer it. Because there's the still six tickets. Right. Gotcha. So what's that average yeah. trying to be? Gosh. So that's ten minus thirty. Yeah. So negative negative 20, twenty over six. So how much is that? Anyone? Negative twenty over six? Yeah. Right. That is Negative three and a third. Negative mm. three. Point three three three. Point three three three. Okay. So let's see. The expected value of the sum for one hundred plays is negative three point three three. What does that negative three point three three mean? Oh yeah. So for all six of these tickets in my box, the average value for a ticket in the box is negative three point three three. So we can actually think about these in dollars, that this, this box is an average loss of three and point three three dollars, right? Right, exactly. Three dollars and thirty-three cents. That's right. Yeah, negative three point three three. Gosh. Three bucks and thirty-three cents. So how do we go for the expected value? Hmm, let's get back to where we were started. Okay, so the expected value, you can go back here and it's just n times the average, right? Right. So we already got that, right? So we said n was 100, and we calculated our average to be 3.33. 3. 
Negative. Negative. Oh my gosh, what all the difference in the world. Wouldn't like, it be nice if it was positive? It would. Yeah, it would be great. So what does that turn out to be? Like negative three hundred and thirty-three dollars. Oh my gosh, Wenley. So you're telling me negative. You, <laughs> your death matters when it's money. You're, you're telling me that by stopping and playing this game with that shady man in Vegas, that we can expect to lose over three hundred dollars? Yeah. I think we signed up for more than we did. Yeah, handle. I think this guy's a con artist. <laughs> yeah. it's a con artist. But Wenley, this is our expected value. Surely we're not gonna if we did this, you know. If, if, if you weren't the only girl to stop on the street and play this game, not every person is going to lose $333, right? Yeah, you're right. It's just our expected amount. Right. There's, but is there some wiggle room involved? There's definitely some wiggle room. And we can actually say that the wiggle room is called a standard error, or SE, of the sum of the 100 plays. And the SE sum is simply equal to um, the SD of the box times the square root of N. And here the N still represents the same thing. N is still the number of plays for this situation. Now, Wenli, I'm nervous when you tell me the SD because I remember from like exam one, calculating the SD was kind of a long process, right? Are we going to have time to do this? Or is there a shortcut that could be made? Yeah, there's actually a shortcut that we can make. So SD here, we can we write, calculate it up here if we need to. Yeah, okay, so the SC sum is just equal to the SD sum equals SD times the square root of N. And we can actually say that the SD is simply the value of our ticket, mm -hmm. um, let's say, Let's call that A, right? Do you want to call that A or B? Or sure, B? yeah, A and B. Okay, so let's say it's A. Or maybe wins and losses. Let's or wins it. and losses, okay. yeah. Let's let's do this by wins and losses. Or let's losses. just do it by just the, um, the numbers, numbers on yeah. those tickets, that 10 and that 6. Good yeah. idea. Okay, so let's take the first number. It's 10 here. I like I like to think about winning first. Okay. So <laughs> let's take the absolute value of 10 minus... The value of my second ticket. Um, my value of the second ticket is negative six right here. Gotcha. So I want to put a negative six right here and close that absolute value sign. Good. So you're basically subtracting what's written on our two tickets. Exactly. I'm subtracting the values of the two tickets. Okay. And I'm not done yet. So this is the first part of calculating the SD. I want to multiply this absolute value by the square root of the proportion of each ticket here. Oh, so like yeah. how many winning tickets out of all the tickets? Right, how right. many losing tickets out of all the tickets? How do we do that? Let's see. I have one winning ticket out of a total of how many tickets? Six. Right. Six sides to a die, six tickets on the, in the box. Okay, so I have one over six right here. Good, so one out of six tickets are winners. Yep, so let me write down those are Winners. And I want to multiply this proportion by the proportion of tickets that are losers here. Okay. Yeah, so sure. let's see. I have five tickets that are losers here. I'm going to be losing negative six here. So I want to put in five as the losers. And as always, I want to put it over the total number of tickets in this box, and that's going to be six again. Okay, so five losers out of six tickets. Gotcha. Yeah. Great. Are we done with that? Yep. So this is just the SD 10 minus negative six. Take the absolute value of that times the square root of the quantity one over six times five over six. But we're not quite finished to figure out how to get the SC sum. We're forgetting to multiply by the square root of n. And remember that n is the number of times I'm playing this game. So I'm playing this game a hundred times, right? So I'll put n as 100 right here. Mm, I see. Yeah. And that'll do it. Yep. So what does that come out to be? Is there a calculator in the audience? Oh. Well, I think the part 
the square root of 1 6 times 5 6, that is 0.37. Okay, so this is 0 0.37. Yeah, we can take it step by step. So what is this 10 minus a negative 6? That comes out to be 16, right? Mm -hmm. The absolute value of 16, so 16 times 0.37. It's actually 0.37267. Should we do all that mm. or not? What do you think? I think well, maybe one more digit. It okay. Won't hurt. It doesn't hurt. 0 0.37, 0 0.372. 0 0.373. Okay, we'll call it that. Okay, so that's, there's this part, there's this part, and then, uh, so what's that, that's, that's our standard deviation. What does that come out to be when we multiply them together? 16 times this. Well, it's going to come out to be 16 times 0 0.373. Mm-hmm. That's going to come out to be about 6, 5.96. So our standard deviation is 5.96, mm -hmm. okay? So there's the SD, and now we got to multiply it by square root of 100. What's the square root of 100? 10. There we go, there's times 10, so that's that. And then, so what is our grand total standard error coming out to be? 59.6. So 59.6, we can think about those in dollars, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wendley, what does this mean in English? I mean, what do, what do all these numbers really mean? Well, that means that we can get something around the negative 333 uh, plus or minus of 59.6. Oh, I see. So it could actually be better than this. Yeah. Or it could be worse. Right. This right. is basically our expected value, give or take this wiggle room. Yeah. So that's what the standard error is basically going to be. Does anybody have any questions on that? It means you can't win. Looks like we are not going to win. We walked into a trap. Yep. So learn from us. Learn from our mistakes. Yep.